Everyone, welcome back to another episode of Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Thanks for tuning in. We are currently interrogating Marie. We're like, hey, if you've got some th some that say, if you got some secrets you hide in, you gotta be truthful with me, okay? If you want my help. So let's press her, let's do it. Um, I'm not gonna scream at her for the crying act. I think that's too intense. I think just look me in the eyes. Look me in the eyes. Damn it, look me in the eyes when I'm speaking to you. Mr. Hyde. Please, tell me what that awful man said to you. Let me be clear, I don't trust the guy, and sure as hell don't believe his story entirely. But I need to get a better idea of the facts from your perspective. I need to know more about when your husband and brother died. Mr. Hyde, please! I am not trying to commit fraud! Are you sure about that? Rex told me all about you, Marie. He told me how 13 years ago, after your brother died in the accident, you became the sole beneficiary of the insurance policy payout. Seems the insurance company started getting suspicious from that point. That's a total lie! Oopsie, I should have pressed her. I should have pressed her. Has that awful man convinced you too? Nobody has convinced me of anything, but if you want to increase your chances, I suggest you start telling me the truth. I'll ask you again. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I accidentally forgot to press her. I'm so trigger happy with just kind of advancing the text to see what juicy story stuff pops up. That I, that I miss these moments. Okay, so I gotta start clicking somewhere else. Marie. It's Rex making all this up. I don't think you're telling me the truth. Yeah, I I, I don't think you're telling me the truth. Right? Actually, okay, well, let, let me think. Let me think seriously about this. So, me saying is Rex making all this up might just make her be like, yeah, he is. And then the, a conversation would just not advance. So I feel like... I feel like this is too forward though, saying, I don't think you're telling me the truth. I feel like that's not gonna get a good reaction out of her, but I feel like this is the only way to advance. So I'm, I'm gonna try it. We're, we're gonna get redos anyway. It's just, I think um you like fail a conversation if you, if you get the wrong answer too many times. I think that's what happens. Let's try this. I don't think you're telling me the truth. I knew it. Okay, okay. Why won't you believe me? If you tell me the whole story, maybe I will. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay. <laughs> I really gotta think these through more carefully. I, I do try to. I do try to see where it would lead, what kinds of results I might get, but it doesn't always work out. Okay, okay. Is Rex making all this up? Of course he is! See, that's the reaction I was expecting, so I don't know how we're going to advance. Do you mean to say that you take his version of events over mine, Mr. Hyde? He is employed by those companies purely to discredit claims and void payments! I can just imagine all the horrible things he's saying about me. I'm not like that! I was already dragged through all this 13 years ago. Oh, so she's already gone through this whole thing. Ooh, the music's picking up. Are you trying to commit insurance fraud? Why would I even consider doing that? Is that the kind of person you think I am? Marie. Uh, well, no, but... Well, no, but... If you don't start giving me absolute facts, what choice will I be left with? Naturally, I want you to believe me, Mr. Hyde, and I'd like to tell you everything, but part of it is very difficult for me. Hmm. This already happened 13 years ago? 13 years ago, my brother, Mike Porter, died in an accident, in a car accident. The brakes in his car failed and he plunged off a cliff. After he died, I was truly alone. He was the closest person I had to a parent. The only other person who took care of me like he did was Peter. On the morning of Mike's funeral, Peter gave me an envelope he'd gotten from Mike. Inside, I found details of an insurance premium Mike had taken out prior to his death. I was the sole beneficiary of this, but it was a small comfort for losing my brother. So that's interesting because she she specifies that it's right before- Well, I don't know if she said means right before his death, but like soon before his death? He had done that? I guess the timing for that would be really strange then because supposedly he died in an accident, right? So, huh. Peter told me that Mike wanted nothing more for me to be happy than for me to be happy and secure and had made provisions that would enable me to live alone without having to worry. It, it sounds like the brother had set this up far ahead of time. I'm pretty sure. The ring you kindly found for me was a present from my beloved Mike. I see. The company that held Mike's policy began to pay out the premium but before long, they stopped making the payments. 
Despite the police investigation concluding that his death was accidental, the insurance company believed otherwise and began making their own investigation. Mr. Hyde, can you imagine the hardships I had to endure to claim Mike's money? To claim what was rightfully mine! Did they send someone to keep tabs on you then, too? Yes, they did. But no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't find any proof that the car crash was anything other than an accident. Eventually, I received the entire payment. Of course, there were still plenty of people who doubted me, but I just had to endure it. During that trying time, it was only Mike's friend, Peter, who stood by me. And after the insurance had been paid out in full, Peter and I got married. So that's how it happened. I want nothing more than to forget that terrible time. But even when I feel I've finally put it all behind me, this happens! I can assure you, Mr. Hyde, fraud is something I would never, ever consider. You have to believe me! Don't listen to that rat, Rex, Rex Foster! Marie. You have to make me believe. I simply don't believe your story. You have to make me believe. You have to make me believe. It just doesn't add up. How could you two, um... How could two close to you- hmm? How could two people close to you die in near identical ways? Moreover, they both left you substantial sums of money. But that's how it happened! They were both victims of similar accidents and both cared for me enough to take out insurance policies that would ensure my security! They loved me and didn't want me to suffer, even after they had gone. Just like my brother, Peter also took out his policy without telling me. I honestly had no idea that I would receive a further payout after Peter died. Man, this is like a lot. This is a lot of coincidences. If it, if this is really the case, wow. What could be so difficult for you? If I tell you, will you hear me out? I wouldn't ask if I had no intention of listening. If there's something you've been holding back, now's the time to let me know. There is something, as I suspected. Time to talk. Yes. You're right. Half a year ago, after Peter had lost his life and the police called me, naturally, I cried and cried, but deep down, a part of me felt like I had been released. I guess because they had a fight with each other. The only rational explanation was that I was feeling pleased to be apart from Peter. Oh man, okay, wait, wait she's not gonna give me another prompt for that? How did you find out about Peter's policy? It was after Peter died and I moved in here. I was going through his stuff and came across the policy information documents. When I read the details, it all became clear and I froze. Peter had done exactly what Mike had done before him and taken out a policy in secret. Wait, 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 you're not gonna elaborate? Maybe she is now, maybe she is now. This is usually the moment where they're like, our, our intense, tense moment is over and they're gonna, we're gonna just have a talk. All right, let's do it. Mr. Hyde. After Mike died 13 years ago, I was left to fend for myself. That is, until Peter started looking after me. We wed after the insurance money from Mike's policy was paid out. But I was still unsettled. Did he really love me, or did he have another motive for marrying me? After all, I had just been awarded a very substantial amount of money. I can see why she'd be worried. It was on my mind all the time, from the moment we moved in together, until he died. Aw, oh, man, so she couldn't let that go, e even after being together for, for quite a while. That, that's, that's hard. After we got married, Peter began to use Mike's money to fund a business venture. A at first, it went well, but as time went on, things took a turn for the worst. We started arguing about money a lot of the time. Each time we had an argument, I felt myself drifting away from him one step at a time. Oh, that's so hard! If I'd known from the start that he had his eye on the, on the money Mike left me, I would have distanced myself from him more. So, at this point, we, obviously we don't know the story because we don't know him, we don't know the relationship with each other, but she feels that she's fairly convinced now, I guess, at, at this point in time that he was just in it for the money, I guess. It would have been an easy decision. I would have realized that this is not the kind of person I needed in my life. The most ironic part of this whole story is, before I could discuss this with Peter, he was gone. The brakes failed while he was driving, and his car plunged off a cliff. It was virtually identical to what befell my brother, Mike. They had one thing in common. They both decided to take out secret insurance policies, 
and they both named me as the person to receive the money in the event of their deaths. That's why I'm being investigated for fraud. I've told them time and time again. I've done absolutely nothing wrong. So you say. I've still got one more thing I want to ask you, Marie. It's about the incident that happened in the hotel 13 years ago. Why did you pretend you didn't know about it when we spoke yesterday? Especially seeing as your own husband, Peter Rivet, was the one who discovered the body of the murdered individual. Mr. Hyde! It's true, he was the person who discovered the body on the fourth floor. But he wasn't alone. Mike was there with him. They discovered the body together. I'm sorry I lied to you about this yesterday, Mr. Hyde. I just wasn't ready to talk about this subject. So what happened? After discovering the body, Mike wasn't the same. She began to act strangely. The next thing I knew, he had died in a car accident. Ooh, I wonder what was going on there. Oh my god, this is crazy, dude! I strongly believe that had he never made that discovery, he'd still be alive today. Mr. Hyde, now you know pretty much all there is to know about my past. Please, don't make me go through all of it again. Marie. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I'm tougher than I look. Why do I have the feeling I've heard that somewhere before? Right. It was after Dad died, and we had moved to New York. My mom said exactly the same thing to me. Try not to spend too much time thinking about it. Remember, we've only got a few more days in this building. If you find you need to get any anything off your chest, give me a call. You listen to what I have to say? Yeah, sure. If you need to talk to someone. Mr. Hyde... Marie, I know this is tough, but can I ask you one more thing? Did either Peter or Mike ever have a conversation with you that mentioned Scarlet Star? Scarlet Star... Well, they mentioned the word star, I think. I see. If I recall correctly, it was while they were working. I distinctly remember that word being mentioned. My brother and husband used the word, along with others working in the hotel. Do you remember what kind of meaning it had? It was a sort of secret code, linked to the closing down party. What kind of party was it? Sorry, but that's something I can't help you with. That's all I can remember. Okay, no problem. Oh, I'm glad we had a talk. I'm glad we had a talk. I'm easily swayed by the stories I, I watch and read because you don't have much evidence to go off of, you know? You, you only have what the story leads you to believe, what, the, what information the story feeds you. So obviously, you know, when there's something that the character hasn't revealed, it's just left for mystery and suspense, you can't know that. So you just have to kind of base it off of, of what you're given. So, you know... That, that, it's well done. It's well done. We're, we're being brought along. We're being dragged into the flow of it, you know? So, like, I didn't... I, I was suspected Marie, and then I didn't suspect Marie. And, you know, I, I'm giving in. I'm giving in. I believe her. I believe her. I'm glad that we were offering counsel to her. I think that's very sweet that we're offering to help, offering to listen, and, and that we have this good relationship with each other. I, I think it's great. I think it's good. Anyway, I've got to go. Of course. I, I feel for her. I feel for if, if everything she's saying is true, then it sucks. Like she she had no control over it, and she looks suspicious as hell. You know, I I do want to hear a little bit more about like how she thinks about her husband though, because she didn't fully elaborate on that. We've got most of the pieces, but I, I kind of wanted to hear her talk about that a little bit more. Marie's husband and brother both seem to be connected to the incident thirteen years ago. Also, the word star that was used by hotel staff then has some significance. Maybe that mysterious orders, uh, order sheet comes from someone connected to the hotel, too. Highly likely. I can't figure out who sent it yet, but I can send a, I can send back a response. Do I have a penny? I reach into the envelope and take out the piece of paper inside. I've got an empty envelope! Empty envelope! I fold the order sheet and slide it into my pocket. I just love that that he doesn't, like... 
he doesn't put it in his thought text box. I guess because it's an action, so it has to be written differently, but still, it's just kind of funny. I always imagine him saying those things out loud. Right, to reply, I am going to need a penny. Don't have one on me, though. I better head back to my room and see what I can dig out. Um, it's not in our wallet. It's a jar, wallet. We, we had money in coins. Um, we didn't use all of it, right? Because we only used, like, a quarter or so. So we should have... We should have money still, right? Here, let me let me just check the counter here real quick. It's not here anymore. Chest with three drawers. Oh! Oh, I've never opened this, I don't think. There's a screwdriver. We probably can use that eventually. It's a red crown catalog. It's the spare key for my room. Guess it won't be much use if I ever get locked out. You should put it under, like, a secret thing somewhere. The drawer has some Lucky's Cafe matchbooks in it. There are some letters piled up at the back of the drawer. Oh, okay. Good, good to know. We're probably gonna need that screwdriver. A hundred percent. Okay, so anyways, we broke open the thingamabob. So it's either in our wallet or... He, he told us to head back to our room. Um, Five dollar bills. A oh, we have quarters, not pennies. How about inside of our suitcase? Was there coins in here? Coins, coins, coins. Where would there be coins? I doubt it'd be in the inventory box yeah i doubt there'd be some in the inventory unless unless it's like hiding under stuff i have to like move it around that'd be pretty funny yeah i don't think there would be anything hiding in here in particular i like that we can move all this around i think that's fun i can't wait until we, we get to use these later okay coins money briefcase i'm gonna guess briefcase or maybe on our our coffee table it's possible you can tell I've been using this wallet for years. Okay, so no, not in here. I don't think there's any here other than the wallet. That was my best guess, so. Okay. Um, I'm gonna check the coffee table. He did tell us to go back to our room, so, so it should be in here somewhere. Right here? Spare change, you got some change. Bottles, nope. Coins? Under a table? Under our bed? In our bathroom? We almost never do anything in our bathroom here. Uh, trash can. Penny. There's a bucket. Oh! Why am I looking at it? The bucket's full of water. Good thing there's not a hole in it. We are so gonna wash something later, like the blood of our enemies. We're gonna wash the blood of our enemies off of a cloth later. This is the sponge I used to clean up the bathroom. Oh, well, good to know that that's there. Um, what about these? Are we gonna need these later? Shampoo and conditioner. Uh, that's right, I condition. Yes, do it. Look, taking care of your hair and body is not an inherently feminine thing. All all y'all out there, no matter what gender you are, you take care of yourself. It's okay. It's not feminine or girly or non-masculine non to, to use like face wash, face moisturizer, conditioner, Shampoo, a proper loofah, proper soap, not just one bar of soap and you're done, okay? <laughs> it's fine. It's awesome. Taking care of yourself, very attractive. Very awesome, okay? So do it. <laughs> treat yourself. Treat your skin. Treat your body. All right. Getting off my soapbox. Just, you know, it sounds like common sense, but some people are legitimately worried about that kind of stuff. They think it's all girly to smell nice. No, that's awesome. That's great. People like that. People like it when you smell nice. <laughs> okay. Um, freaking heck, where do I search? Under my pillow? Um, where do I look? Do I have to cut away before the end of the episode? I want to find the damn penny. I don't want to spend the entire rest of the episode just searching for this thing. Uh, okay. I'm gonna take a brief look around. BRB. Hi, I'm back. I haven't found the penny yet, but I opened his, uh, his closet, so it's new stuff. There's a pinky rabbit! I'm guessing maybe we might find a coin in the pockets of his suit, so I'm just gonna look around real quick. Never hurts to have an umbrella handy. That's a piggy bank. Oh, a piggy bank! Perfect! Shaped like pinky rabbit. Or, a pinky bank. <laughs> Aww. Normally I don't- y'all know, normally I don't like puns, but I think if they're, like, cleverly done, I think it's cute. That's cute! Okay. My beloved pinky bank. Oh, he even says beloved. He still likes pinky rabbit. There's a coin slot on the back of its head. I'm pretty sure there's some change inside. This pink rabbit was the main character in a cartoon I watched as a kid. 
The piggy bank was given to me by Mila. Mila! She gave this to us! That's so sweet. How is she doing? How is she, is she doing okay? Where is she at? I hope she's doing good. A girl I met at Hotel Dusk. I guess it doesn't really go with the rest of my crap. Aw, oh, look at that little smile. I need to get at the money in my pinky bank, but I prefer not to have to break it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So we're gonna have to figure out some kind of method for that, huh? Okay, we'll do that in the next episode. I just want to finish looking at the rest of his closet, and then we'll end off there. I like suits. They're comfy and easy to wear. Suits you. The suits suit you. Haha. <laughs> my slacks are folded up at the bottom of the closet. I keep my towels in a neat pile. Okay. I guess that's it. All right. So in the next episode, we're going to have to figure out a way to extract the, the coins from the piggy bank without the pinky bank, without uh, breaking it. So I, I'm guessing this is one of the old fashioned ones. Cause like, again, back in the day, if I recall correctly, piggy banks just had the coin slots and then nothing else. So then you would have to break it to open, to get your money. But in the newer ones, they started putting these little rubber hole stoppers at like usually like the bottom of it. And so you could just whoop, open that and then you'd get your money out uh, in a wider gap than just a little slot, right? Um, so I'm assuming this is one of the old fashioned ones since he only mentioned a coin slot. So I'm trying to think like, how are we gonna get, how are we gonna fish coins out of there other than literally trying to shake it out inconveniently from the coin slot? Not really sure. Guess we'll figure that out next time. I'll see you then. This is Axis, over and out. <laughs>